Hello everyone, can you listen to me? I'm Victor and we today we're starting the, the talks on the Game Jam Plus incubation phase. So congratulations for all of, all of you who are here. And I hope that we can talk actually, that we can interact with, with one another. So um, I'm, I, will, I will open my window here at the YouTube section so we can uh, talk while I'm, I'm speaking to you. Okay, so I'm, yes, fantastic. Look, my name is Victor. I'm the audio director from a, a, a game audio develop, developer studio, and we are all from Brazil, okay? So actually what I want to know from you is where are you guys from? So type in, in, in the chat box where are you guys from. I can see someone from Indonesia. I can see another a Polish audio designer here with me. So that's really cool to, to have you around. Uh, 
So, uh, <clears throat> so what's what's my story in actually Portugal? Look, CR, CR, Curitiba, será? South Africa, Serbia, Brazil, fantastic, fantastic. Well, people from everywhere. I'm really Mexico. Take a look at that. I'm very happy to be here among you guys and be Costa Rica. Wow, fantastic, fantastic. Each country, each new country, I get more hap happier. <laughs> it means that we are all connected, and, and I'm, I'm very, I'm very proud by the time that we live in that, that we can connect so fast with people from everywhere in the world. Okay, so let me start my talk with you, talking about the subject itself and a little bit about my story. Okay, so you can understand what brought me here to talk about. Uh, project development. So I am a, I'm a music producer originally and a musician. And as most people know, usually artists, they tend to be very sparse on their planning and very not very objective setting their goals, right? Especially because they are always connected to this creative side, to our intuitive side. And coming from this background, I realized that I needed to learn some techniques that uh, would help me develop my own craft and to spread my voice, like, I mean, um, louder and more organized. And the way I, I discovered, I don't know why I have a song playing over here. I don't know if Leo is listening to me, but anyway, okay, I'll keep this background song. Oh, all right. Thank you, Leo. Okay. And le le now I have some feedback. Okay, good. All right. And pro I, I, as I was talking, in the music area, people tend not to be so organized. So I, I've realized that in order to make it inside the, the entertainment area, we got to be artists that are organized, and I started develop, developing some techniques into what later on I discovered what is project management, okay? Now, what do I do? I lead teams and I lead processes to deliver game audio projects to my clients. So usually they come in a high number of demand, a high number of requests for me to solve in a short time of period. If you don't have these skills I'm going to talk about today, most of the time you, you will end up in a dead-end road where you're going to be loaded with a lot of content to produce and actually without knowing what to do actually to make it, um, to organize it and to, to deliver all the work you have to deliver. <clears throat> so, <coughs> sorry, there are some techniques that you can learn and I'm here to, to share with you on in actually not only techniques, but also some uh, concepts that you, you must know in order to be faster and to improve the quality of the, your work and actually to energize your team, which is very, very important. Most of the time, we work a lot on our, in our craft, but actually what most famous, uh, really famous people and people that made in their career, what they have been telling me is that it's all about project management and not only about how good are you in your craft. So uh, if you're following me, you were understanding that uh, project development is the technique that will help you show your work around because your work is actually done, is not late, okay? Um, so starting with what is project management, I think it's very important that you to understand that they are not only techniques, some exercises, but also it, they are concepts that you must understand some names and some concepts in order to be able to talk and to, and to talk to your team about each stage of your, of your project, okay? When are you, when do you need project management skills. 
especially when you're when you are developing a very complex task when there are many people working together with you okay so i imagine you are all developing a game right now so this is con this is considered a complex co complex task because it involves many people working in a certain schedule right so this these times are very important for you to work on the on the concepts that I'm going to show you today. But not only that in these moments, when you are moving from one city to another, you can also use these techniques that I'm going to show to you because you're going to be organized and you won't uh, it, it won't disturb, disturb your routine, your personal routine. All you have to deal with, in the, with your professional routine. Uh, I hope I'm, I'm, I'm making myself clear here with you because <clears throat> I stopped uh, I stopped listening from you in, on the chat, <laughs> but okay. Uh, so also you're going to need project management when you have a complex delivery system. And what I mean by that, for example, when you're developing a game, the first thing you have to do is to prototype, right? Right after prototyping, you're working on the vertical slice of your game. These two periods, you need a lot of little, little deliveries, to, uh, uh, many little deliveries to be done in a short, uh, uh, in a short time, in order for you to make it happen, right? As I usually mention to my to my team. So when you have complex delivery schedule, it's very important that you apply all the con concepts that we're going to be talking today. Okay, and also in the end, when your pro when your product which by now I'm going to start calling your game, okay? Uh, uh, when it requires revision and polishing. And why is that? Because it, it gets to a certain point where you, where you haven't finished some tasks from the development part, and then you are already reviewing the beginning of your project. So this period, this crossfade period is very... Uh, Crunchy, what I mean. And what I mean what, by, by crunchy, it's a moment in the, in the development stage that people get, to, get really stressed by the amount of deliveries that they have to do. And if you don't use these pro, uh, project management concepts, you can get into trouble with your partners, with your clients, with your team, and even with yourself, which is... My most important thing here to talk to you is how to uh, manage projects and keep your lifestyle, your health balance, uh, and maintaining a positive attitude to life. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, we're not starting the techniques uh, uh, right now. I'm just talking to you about some some uh, brief points that you must understand about the overall project management and what are the signs that you actually need to work better on your project project management skills okay first when you are late in your deliveries okay so let's say you said with your team that you must deliver uh, three level three three levels of your game done at least the background done by the next three weeks and you haven't made it so when you're late in deliveries, you usually start with a good analysis of your project management skills, okay? Not that you're not good enough, not that you can do it, but only take a look at what we're going to be talking today, okay? Uh, another, another, uh, another moment that you can be looking at project man management skills is when your clients are not returning, okay? When you don't have clients returning to you, it's it can be some process of your project management skills that has been uh, uh, making them go away to find another person to work with, okay? And talk in organizing yourself with the skills that we will be talking today will help your clients to actually return and buy more from you. And for last, right now in my examples, is when you can't finish a project. I talk to many, many, many indie developers and they have a really, really hard time to finish their project, especially because, as I mentioned, artists, they tend to be very uh, intuitive and very dreamy. 
they don't but they don't set the enough plans to finish what they want to create okay in their heads things are very very reachable but when, actually when we when, when we face time and schedule actually we we realize that we need more than a dreamy personality we actually need someone that make things happen okay cool i'm re I'm, i'm having a good time here guys talking to you about project management because it's very important for everyone to know more about it so in the end what are the, are the results of these skills that you're going to learn today you have your project finished you have your clients happy and you have your team energized what it means with that your team wants to work with you again okay So if you are not an, uh, an organized person, your team won't be uh, won't like to work with you. And most of the time, they will find another team for them to join. Uh, cool. So finally, let's start. Cool. Uh, project management actually it starts with a project. Okay. And projects, usually the first thing that is there in projects that they are plans they are something from the head of someone it's inside our imagination okay projects actually are the next stage of it is the next stage of a plan okay so let's have a plan right now together <clears throat> my plan is to make an open world R rpg game i want to do it but actually when i start writing about what i want to do I start developing a plan, okay? And a plan is, is uh, uh, solidifying uh, an imagine, uh, uh, in, in a thought of my mind, okay? Into the reality. And the project is something that is going to connect the plan with each, each uh, stage of its completion, okay? So that is a project. You're going to get a plan and you're going to organize this plan in a way that you can see in the schedule and in the overall um, time its completion. <clears throat> so uh, the first thing we need in a plan is uh, in a plan or in a project is a goal. Okay. And clear objective. Okay. So Using the example that I've just done, I want to make an R RPG open world game. This is actually not very viable when we're talking about project management goal settings. Okay, I, I like to use a, an, a, an interesting uh, technique, setting goals, that they are, uh, it, it's, very usable, it's very usable when we are setting up goals, okay? Um, But first, before I start planning, get your pen uh, telling you about how to set goals. Get your pen and write down your own goal about the Game Jam Plus. Okay, so focus on the Game Jam Plus. Or you can even write to me on the chat box here. Uh, um, Team Damison is asking me how long I'm asking if it would miss. No, oh, okay, we're taking 30 minutes here, not longer than that, okay? So let's write down, can you please write down for me your goal with the Game Jam Plus? Like, I want to make my game, I want to make a point-and-click VR game. What are your goals on the Game Jam Plus? Okay. Uh, in order to set, let me, to set your goals, I, I want to go to my team right now for future game development. Fantastic. I hope you're, you, you're seeing my, my screen here, right? Fantastic. So executioner, let's get his goal and help him develop his own goal. I want to make a platform game with my team, Taina uh, uh, I'll get both goals here. 
Can you all see my screen here, my Google Docs screen here? I hope you can. On the on the live on the live session. Ah, good. Thank you, Leo. So I'll start working with these two goals. These are actually goals and very interesting and very possible uh, goals to be accomplished in a, in a time manner, right? It's not something very dreamy. I want to gauge my team right now, engage my team right now for future game developments, and I want to make a platform game with my team, okay? These are the two goals that we have on the screen right now. Let me see if there's one more. No, no yeah, there, no, I can. <sighs> Okay, so the technique we're going to add over here is to think about what I call the technique it's called SMART, okay? Our goals, they must be specific from S, from specific, measurable, attainable, okay, and relevant. There are actually more, uh, <clears throat> even more concepts that we can de like dig into goal setting, but these five, these four, and time relevant. Okay, relevant in time. That's it. Smart. Okay. So when we are setting up a goal. It must be specific about something. So you can't say, I am going to be the best game developer in the world, for example. Uh, you have to make something very specific. For example, a platform game, as our second example over here, it's very specific, right? Dodge, my team, is also very specific. So we are talking about points that are okay over here. Measurable. Okay. Are these goals measurable? Actually, can I, uh, over after some time, measure the results of it? For example, how is he going to measure the engaging level of his team over in his goal? Okay. And so this tells me that this example over here, we have to think about how is he going to measure his feeling for, the, for his team. So is the team motivated to be, to, to create, to meet after work, for example? Are your team motivated to... To meet uh, uh, how you're gonna measure, okay? Measure. <clears throat> Are your team gonna be mo motivated to meet after their work, after their school? Or, for example, if my team get together two times a week, this is actually gonna be uh, a, a way for me to measure if my goal is, if I'm getting there, if my team is getting there on the objective that I want to 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 accomplish okay now measurable i want to make a platform game with my team actually it's quite measurable what we're going to see in the end if the game is out right is the game is the game out Yes, it is. So it's actually measurable. Cool. Now, at attainable. Okay, it's something relates attainable. It re relates of your capability of the, of doing this plan, this plan and this goal. Is this something that you have already accomplished before in other teams? Is this something that you know how exactly what you do and the tools that you need to develop? your your goal for example i want to make a platform game with my, with my team 
in and release it on Nintendo Switch. Let's say, let's say this is your goal. Have you ever released a game on Nintendo Switch? Actually, there are endless uh, 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 porting procedures to, do, to, to release a game on Nintendo Switch. You know better than me. So is actually this goal attainable? Is it possible for me to accomplish? So I don't know, maybe not. So if I, I want to make a platform game with my team and release it on Steam, this is attainable. It's something that you can do it over a certain period of time. Yes, it's something that I can do it because I've already done it. I know how to do it. So now your goal is attainable. For last, is it, let's, okay, relevant and time. Is it relevant for you, your goal? For example, how important uh, uh, is... I want to make a platform. Okay, sorry. I, I was reading the comments here and I lost my, my thought over here. Okay. So is it relevant for you and for your process to make this goal, to accomplish this objective, for example? So if it's relevant for you or to gauge your team for future game developments, of course. So it's, it's, an, it's part of the SMART goal. And in the end, is it measured in time? This is where both of the goals over here, they uh, actually don't have anything talking about that. So <clears throat> how long you're going to need to accomplish this goal, the first one? I want to gauge my team right now for future games now for the next year. I want to make a platform game with my team and release it on Steam in 30 days okay so actually when we are trying to making the exercise of setting up our plans and our goals in a specific in a measurable attainable relevant and measured in time we are doing a good job in goal setting okay so let's make a quick exercise on the check chat box again and i want you all to try to organize a sentence that talks about your goal in a specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and measured in time, okay? I won't be correcting you guys over here right now. I just want you to try and to, and, and actually I want to see if you understood my, what I wanted, what I'm sharing with you, okay? <clears throat> So moving on, I don't know if you're gonna um, if you're gonna write down. I'm I'm gonna be waiting for your answer. Okay. So let's continue. Right. Continue. So the next part, uh, actually, what we're gonna look for. Uh, where is my Streamyard window? I just lost you. <laughs> Uh, I want to make a point and click adventure with my team and develop my skills in further two months. Fantastic. That's it. That's it. I want to gauge the capabilities of my team creating a hypercultural game in 90. Fantastic. You got it, guys. You got it. That's it. That's it. You are one step away of actually uh, making it happen. Because now you know the time, the time that you have to develop and actually is relevant for you. Uh, it's specific. It's measurable under a time or under something that you, you've already conceived. Uh, all right. Cool. Our next, next part of the talk will be on 
delegating tasks, okay? This is another very, very, very important that most of the people, they tend not to, to make it. So think about a, a, a factory, right? It's, it's quite impossible for you to make a shoe from the beginning of the process of making the rubber in the end of the process of putting shoes in the box, right? A whole shoe section. How shoes are done nowadays? The process of it is divided in very, 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 very small tasks. So a person or right now a machine, <coughs> it do small parts of this processes in order to make the big picture, the, the tennis or the shoe in the end of the chain, okay? So we're, we're, in order to understand this point of view, it's very important that you delegate. Uh, it's very important <clears throat> that you start understanding all the tasks that you have in front of you and being able to delegate either to people or to the machine. If you are making shoes, of course, you'll be working a lot, a lot of machines. But now, as we are making games, we have to be to understand all the tasks that involves making a game and actually being able to delegate the most part of uh, all the parts that there are in our plan. So what are the parts that stays with me, the project manager? The project manager usually don't do anything besides controlling the whole chain and the whole situation. So you're coordinating your team. Most of the time, your team will be developing new assets, new material for the game, and you will be, ju you will be just checking the schedule, the quality of, the, of the, the deliveries, how are they delivering this process. So being able to delegate, it's very, very, very important. Some people, they tend to, they are very good in their craft. And as good as you are in your craft, the difficult it gets to delegate, okay? And why is that? Because you're good and you don't know people that don't do good as you do. And that's very, very, that's a, that's a maturity part of the process in project management that you need to develop. And how, and how can you do that if you think that there's nobody good, better than you to do this job? The first thing you got to do is learn how to train and to create new, nurture new talents, okay? So if you believe that you are the best uh, uh, artist, concept artist in, t in town or in your group, and you can't delegate this task, you have two options in your hand. One is actually do it. And the second one is to train someone to do it together with you. The first time, it won't be good. The second time, the, peop the person will get closer to what you want, but the third time, I'm sure they will make exactly what you're asking for because you already told them what to do. So be aware that delegating tasks is very, very, very important. And if you get a task delegated to you, make sure you understand the task, make sure you understand the goal that's behind that task, okay? Uh, and... In the end, it's all about meeting people and in understanding how human relationship works, okay? So that's very important that while you're developing a complex project like developing a game, that you have a, cl a close connection with your team, that you're regularly meeting them. Some projects that I develop in the studio demands daily meetings, okay? Daily meetings. Uh, <clears throat> daily meetings, they are short in time, but they happen every day. For example, a daily meeting can be only 30 minutes long if you have a big team. And if you have a small team, just 15 minutes long meeting. But they are very, very, very important. And try to go to the meeting you, you propose with your team with the goal already set for that meeting. For example, I want to talk to my team about the schedule of the game. I want to talk to the team about the quality of the music of the game. So when you reach to the meeting with your with your team with this goal already set, you're going to feel in the end that you did a good job and you actually
put things forward, okay, in your project. Uh, oh, now we are digging into project management pure, okay? So just reviewing a little bit, make sure you make smart goals, you set smart goals, and you are actually, you are capable of delegating tasks. Oh, usually a project or a game project, game development project, has something that we call uh, project cycle, okay? And what is a cycle? Is something that goes round, okay? It's not something that goes linear. So for those who are actually looking into how to develop, develop your team to make more games in the future, you have to understand the circle, the cycle, and not understand it in a long or in a long run, okay? This is very metaphorical, but I'm, I'm going to make my point to you. Every project starts, as I mentioned, with the plan, and then you're going to set the goals. Together with the goals, you're going to set the schedule of production. You're going to set the schedule of delivery. And then in the end, you're going to close the project, and it's done. And what you do after it's done, you start the revision project, the, the revision process of this project, but the next one, is actually starting plan, goal setting, project schedule, delivery schedule, closing, blah, blah, blah. And you're going round and round and round. You, you're always welcoming new projects to your, to, your, um, to your studio just because you already understood each cycle, okay? Uh, so it's very important that you don't miss timing on setting up the cycles for example if you are in the production time of the of your plans don't change your goals okay so this is very this is mandatory like stick to the plan so if your plan is as as you all written down here i want to gauge the capabilities of my team in creating a hyper casual game in 90 days in the middle of the process, you realize that actually what you want to do is a first-person shooter game. Man, this is out of questioning right now. What you have to do is stick to the plan and do the game you have already set to do, which is, in this case over here, the hyper-casual game. Okay? Don't change the plan while you are in production. You can start thinking about if the plan was good enough for your for your own skills you can are you capable of doing it you, you, in the middle of the process you actually realize that you oh it, this is more difficult than i thought okay but keep on doing to the end of it so close the cycle every time you close in the cycle in starting a new one actually you're getting better in project management Okay, so that's very, very important that you actually manage to, to run the whole cycle. And let's, let's review the cycle. Pro plan, dream, né? Well, goal settings, schedule, delivery schedule, revision and polishing, and then closing. Okay? And guys, this is the framework from projects that goes from indie games to AAA games. The only difference between these games and these projects are that they're between each task, there are, uh, sorry, between each phase, there are endless tasks. If you're doing a hyper casual game, you have a smaller number of tasks to do. In a short uh, moment, we're gonna dig into, into some software that I use to, to control the projects, okay? So, <clears throat> this is very important too. Let me share my screen again with you. All right, uh, you can see my screen there. Okay, let me paste this information here for you. So every project, they break down into 
phases, okay? So as I mentioned before, goal setting phase, scheduling phase, uh, production phase, delivery phase, okay? Every phase is break down into sprints, okay? This is vocabulary, okay? Project management vocabulary. And every sprint is break down into tasks, okay? So, phase is a long period of time that you set of that phase that you want to develop. A sprint is inside that phase a smaller period of time, but usually they are 7 to 15 days long, okay, a sprint. And tasks are something that you develop daily and weekly based. Okay, This is very, 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 very important to understand, guys, because when you are setting up your, your project, you have the concept part, you have the, uh, uh, actually the part of developing, the part of programming, the part of polishing, and each part of your, of your game is break, can be break down into phases, sprints, and tasks. So how do we do uh, a project here in Flutu? I'm going to share with you a little bit now about my experience, OK? I don't develop games itself. I develop music and sound effects for games in our studio. But let's call sprint and task. A client just came to me and said, Victor, book the project. I need a music theme for my game, but also I need 150 sound effects and I need them implemented into Unity. Okay, so usually this is, of course, in a simple manner, the briefing that I get from my clients. So what we, sound designers, what we see over here talking about phase, sprint, and task. So phase one will be briefing and... Uh, style direction. Phase two, producing assets production. Phase one, sorry. Phase one, I'll understand the brief. Ah, what's the game? How does, uh, what's the game about? What's its reference? What is its stage of production? Who am, who am I going to deal with uh, on, uh, during this process? How am I going to be paid? How are you going to release your game? All these things are done in the in the first phase here at our studio. Or you, you can create your own studio, to your own uh, in your in your own phase too. Okay, but I'm just sharing with you what is my daily routine dealing with phase sprint and tasks. Then we have asset production, where we actually make the music and sound effects. Then we have assets approval then we have implementation phase and uh, q a all right let's say let's keep with five right now i can i could even uh, uh, separate it e even more under briefing and style direction i will Uh, one, whoops, I need it to start with one again. Okay. Briefing in style and direction, I want this sprint. I want to talk about its sprint. The first sprint is actually read, uh, get the GDD, get the game design documents, uh, talking, talking 
to the game designer about reference. Talk to the game designer about reference. Uh, organize the team working on this task. All right. Uh, scheduling. Okay. And then I will do the same thing for asset production. Okay, so set the music schedule. Set the sound effects delivery schedule. Okay, I'm doing here completely live with you, okay? So you can understand what is a phase, a sprint, and a task. Now, I'm going to go to the task part, all right? So let me get the phase. Asset production. The sprint, set the sound effects delivery schedule, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about its task. Okay, so task one, talk to the designers about the direction. Uh, try some sounds together with the artists. Create some sounds. Create some sounds together with the artist. Uh, split the work with the other designers. So now I'm going to talk about tasks that I'm going to do, I'm going to be accomplishing daily or in a really really short time. Okay. So for example, I'm going to start with phase with asset production which is a long phase it can be more than 10 days long okay then i'm going in, inside asset production i'm going to go to the sprint part which is set the sun of seven days long and here is one day long okay one day, one day. You understand this concept where we have phase, which is a long period divided into sprints and tasks. So we can see precisely the size and the amount of work we have to develop, okay? I'm sharing with you uh, in a very simple and direct way what is what usually happens inside the studio here and with, with all the designers that we work together with in order to accomplish a game audio project, okay? Talking about game design itself, you have many, 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 many stages of production. So the long is your description, the longer your description, the more organized you'll be and you can see ahead, okay? Uh, now, let me get, let's talk, the best part of the class, <laughs> let's talk about the tools, okay? The tools you're going to be needing in order to organize your project and to be a good project management manager, okay? Uh, the tools that you need, you have several tools, uh, free and premium tools. For example, a good one that I like to use is called Notion, okay? Notion is a software that you can use to create and organize your sprints, your phase, your sprints, and your tasks. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be showing you what I've prepared here for our class, uh, a small board so you can understand. What you're going to do, you're going to open, log in into, into Notion, notion.so, okay? So you can see over here. Uh, and then you, you're going to log in. You're going to come here to private, start a new project, you know, and then my game. Over here, you're going to click on uh, table, start table, 
and then new database, okay? All right. On the table part, you're going to write on this column your phase one, which is AAA. Your phase two, your, your phase three, your sprints that you have already settled. Luckily, I've done it already on the project management over here. And I usually separate my projects, phases, sprints, and tasks with some emotions, emojis in the beginning. So I can clearly see it over here. So you can see phase one, which now I'm calling P1. And inside P1 is sprint one. Inside P1, sprint one, S1, I have task one. This is very important that I can work, for example, work on the level background or work on the in level two background, for example. On Monday, you can open this card and write down any information relevant to this task. You can paste links over here. You can use, uh, you can paste pictures. You can share a lot of information over here. And then you, when you close it, it will always be inside your, your task over here, okay? <laughs> and the same for phase and for sprint. You can describe the phase over here. So anytime you need to talk to your team about each uh, about uh, the about the project you're working on, you can share your Notion board, which is free, or completely free. Okay, and inside it, you're gonna see all the description and all the information about the project. Uh, something really interesting about uh, Notion is that by clicking on the plus sign over here. You, you add a new view. What does it mean? You just add another way to see your, your list. For example, let's see in a board, in a board view, okay? In this board view, we call it Kanban. You have done, not done, and in progress. I can move one task. Oh, oh, no. oh, here. I can move one one task while they are being done or not done or in progress. Okay. So after you finish your task two, for example, you move it from not done to in progress. You finish, you do go, you move to done. Okay. Another interesting view is also the timeline view, where you can put into the timeline of your notion. For example, let's set the phase three from today, sorry, tomorrow to the next month. Here. And every time I update this information over here on phase three. If I move to the, to the other table or board, you will see that it automatically changed the date over here. So you can keep track of each phase, each sprint and each task inside each spring. So for example, here, I've made a little mock-up for you of, of the time schedule of phase number one. It would go from December one to January one. So it's a long phase, okay? Then you have sprint one, a 15 day long sprint one, where we have two tasks inside this sprint only, okay? So going from a long phase, a shorter sprint, and then small tasks. Actually, I told you that tasks, they are delivered, they are done in a really short time, usually two or one day only, okay? So under this sprint, I would have much, much more time 
to, to do more tasks. What if I need the, uh, I need, I don't need this amount of time. I can make a shorter sprint and I can start the sprint to over here. Here. And then the same thing. I was I would have sprint one uh, task tasks for the sprint two over here inside in, and I would start putting them all in the in the schedule board. These three views table timeline and board is everything that you need to master project management. Why is that? Because you're listing your goals, you are separating separating it, it into phases, into sprints, and into tasks. You are setting up the days for you to develop and accomplish these tasks. And in the end, you are also checking what is being done, what is in progress, and what actually needs to be done in the future. Okay? So the bigger you get, you're not done, uh, uh, not done column, you understand that there's a lot to go in the process. The bigger it gets the done column over here, it's because you're reaching the end of your project, okay? Guys, this is just uh, an introduction uh, on project management because it's a very dense and very large uh, uh, topic, and especially dealing with software and with game development production, okay? I've wanted to, to make a, a short introduction for you so you can understand important concepts as goal setting, breakdown into phases, sprints, and tasks, <coughs> and then putting into notion, putting into practice, okay? Uh, what if you want to develop even more your project management skills, I suggest you to study the Scrum methodology, which is a methodology of project management. You're going to be digging a lot into each step that I've talked to you about. There are several certifications online, free and also not free, <laughs> freemium, as usually what they say. It's very interesting uh, if you want to get serious into project management, okay? They, they offer several certificates for the, the level of, of, uh, of engage, engagement that you have with their technique. And I actually suggest you giving a try if you want to be a better project manager. Uh, guys, my name is Victor Heim. I hope you have liked this, this chat, this talk. It was actually very, very interesting for me to share it with you and uh, challenging actually uh, because I really want you to put into practice what I've talked and I know that it's very complex and most of the time you are, you are actually learning it from the first time. So uh, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn uh, where I am most of the time talking to, to people over there on that network or on, Inst on Instagram too. Uh, both you can find me like on like my uh, on my studio, which is flute to music. Okay, um, and you can learn about the work that we do. It's flute to music.com, our studio. Ah, I, I'm gonna write down our website over here, so you can check out the work that we develop. Uh, if you are over here, and then if you use LinkedIn. I kindly ask you to follow me here. I'm always posting some content, new stuff over here. You can find me over here oh, uh, on, on this link that I've just posted on the chat box. Just tell me, just uh, when you're adding me there, just let me know that you you are from, from the team here, from the, from the Game Jam Plus, okay? And all right, we have... Five minutes, five to ten minutes of Q and A questions and answers. Uh, type down your your questions and your suggestions and you what are what's in your mind. Anything related, please, to project management. If you can start your questions with what 
in how is fantastic. You get an extra point. Ok. Vou esperar um pouquinho aqui, porque estava demorando um pouco. Good. First question here. What book or text would you recommend for increasing vocabulary skills for communication? Uh, first, I believe you are talking about intercommunication, right? Communicating with your friends and with your colleagues. I'm McKinley. I believe that's what you're asking. Are you talking about vocabulary related to project management? Mindset. Okay. Okay. I understand. Let me just answer McKinley's question first to project management. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, As I mentioned, there is a course on Udemy uh, from, uh, I have to check his name right now. Uh, you can look for Scrum methodology on Udemy, okay? You have several, uh, several courses and trainers over there. And most of the time, these courses are going to be talking exclusively about uh, vocabulary in project management, okay? But be aware that it's more important that you close cycles than to you understand more about vocabulary. My, my, my personal story is that I came from closing many, 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 many cycles and then in the future... I discovered the whole vocabulary around project management. So it actually helped me to get a clear vision of my own processes and the processes that I've, I have developed through my life. Okay. Uh, and now, uh, how does one adjust their mindset to go from idealistic to realistic? First, uh, this Being an idealistic person is not having an idealistic mindset, actually, is not bad at all. It's actually fantastic. This is, uh, this is something that we, we need in the world, actually, more idealistic people. Artists, they are more idealistic, really. So uh, when we are, when I actually, I, I think about not, not adjusting or changing my mindset, but actually putting the cloth of someone realistic and putting the cloth of someone uh, idealistic. So it gets to a point that you are actually, imagine there's a point which, where you are actually creating your game and developing your own idea. You don't, know, you don't need someone realistic there. You need yourself idealistic. You can say, I'm going to build the next, I don't know, GTA. I'm going to build the next, um, ah, whatever. It's all right for you to be that dreamer. But when it gets to the point that you're actually planning to develop your idea, you have to think about, oh, okay, so this is what I want to do and what actually is achievable right now from that gigantic goal. So then you're actually moving to this realistic spot. If you can't do it by yourself, try talking to your friends about your plan. Most of the time, friends, they give us uh, uh, interesting inputs for um, relating to, to where can we see different, how can we see life differently. So trusting people that you love and that loves you will help a lot for you to change your mindset, but actually not change, but to understand different mindsets. Because as I mentioned before, you actually need 
both mindsets in order to succeed in your career. Okay. Uh, what kind of music is the most popular in game, in your opinion? Most popular? Mm, difficult. Impossible. It's like it's, it's the same question is what what are the most popular games in the world? Genres, for example. No. The best music, the most popular music is the music that connects with your community. Okay. So if you're developing a hyper casual game for I don't know, 30-year-old ladies, the music has to match their lifestyle and something that they like. So if you're developing a game for teenagers to play FPS and all Doom-like style, make sure that the music is sounding close to close to what they like. Actually, <laughs> I don't know, because you don't need to drive yourself to what they like, but make, like, make sure you're on that track, okay? Uh, so the more we finish our sprints, the more experience we get overall. Exactly, McKinley. Yes, yes. So you won't learn everything uh, that I'm talking about on courses. And actually, actually you're going to be learning when you're closing these cycles. You'll be learning more and more. Jan Hoshni, good friend of mine. Very happy to be here with you and with your crew. Uh, Fluffy Puff, ZA, thank you so much. Thanks to you, man. Thanks to you. And I wish you a great game jam. So, Vic, you started young with artists in shows. This is correct. How and why you changed from traditional music to skilled gaming sound and music artists? Okay. A bit more of my story to my friend Elio. Uh, yes, I came from a completely musical background. Okay. So, I've studied music in comp composition in, in the university. And during the university... I used to play a lot. So I used to be a session musician playing in venues and session and, and in albums and stuff. But while in, in, in the conservatory and in Brazil, I was also studying music for media. So music that talks about storytelling, that reinforces the storytelling. It's always been something in my mind on how to tell stories with music. And the harmonies that goes together to tell a horror stories. What are the harmonies that sound mysterious or adventurous? This is something that really, really like grabbed me from day one. Okay. So going to game audio actually was a process in my life that I had to study a lot of game, uh, game audio programming. So actually to connect these. Uh, musical background that I had with how to implement it inside Unity and Unreal. So the process was actually natural because I I love what I do and I always loved what I what I'm doing now. I'm just doing it now more focused because back then when I was uh, especially during the university times I was putting a lot of hats on. So I would play. I would record and then I would make a movie, make a movie, I mean, sound, right? Make the music for the movie, sound so sound effects for a movie, and then I would make a game. No, 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 but now we're just doing games. And that's, that's actually a really nice thing in my career right now. <clears throat> yeah, thanks to you, buddy. Uh, my friends, so uh, we have some time for the last question. If you want to make something, ask something. Uh, muito obrigado, as we say in Portuguese. It was a pleasure for me to be here and to share with you. I really, really, really wish you luck in this G Game Jam Plus uh, round. And I'm sure good things are gonna come out of this of this uh, game jamming uh, edition. 
and I'm actually getting get inside the the Discord uh, our Discord server today. I think Leo is going to be sending me the link, and we can be close together. There will be open vacancies for those who want to consult me and my team regarding game audio, especially game audio, okay? Not project management, but only music and sound effects. So you can consult us for a 30-minute session with me and my team on how to develop your game and how to make your game sound better, okay? During this Game Jam Plus. And, uh, well, guys... This is it. Brazilians, we Brazilians are like this. We say goodbye a thousand times before actually leaving. So this is my third time saying goodbye. 